Thank you. How would you have both pitched Minx to audiences? Oh, okay. How would I pitch Minx to audiences? Listen, it's a workplace comedy <laughs> where the workplace is a porn magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where two unlikely people pair up, uh, a feminist who was educated at Vassar and a low rent porn publisher to make the first ever erotic magazine for women. We talk in nude men. Yes. And so, um, uh, so Oscar, can you tell me a little bit about Richie? Of course, yeah. So Richie is the photographer of Minx Magazine, and uh, he's been working at Bottom Dollar Productions uh, for a long time before then, but he was a makeup artist for their um, men's magazine. So uh, this is the first opportunity he has to really showcase his artistic skills behind the camera. And uh, yeah, so he takes pictures of all the, uh, all the male models there, um, and it's a huge learning experience for him. And it's a huge moment for him to sort of shine his creative chops to not only his workers, but himself as well. So that, that was a really cool journey for him to go through. And I just have a fun question. Uh, what kind of animal do you think Richie's most like? Oh my God, what kind of animal? I think, um, I think Richie is like a koala bear. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cuddly. Yeah, cuddly, yes. Richie's cuddly. He's a cuddly guy. Yeah. And uh, Lennon, can you tell me about, um, about Shelly? Yeah, sure. So Shelly is the sister of Joyce, our editor-in-chief. And um, Shelly is really encouraging Joyce to kind of go for it. Shelly is a Pasadena housewife, mother of three. Um, and I think they both came up in the country club circuit, the, the, the waspy circles of Pasadena. Um, and I think she sees, she's titillated by, by the opportunity for Joyce. She sees that her sister's been spinning her wheels for a while and that maybe this is an opportunity that's worth the risk, you know? Um, so she encourages her sister to go forward into that world and, and, uh, and go for it and make minks. And, um, and therefore she gets started to get wrapped up in the world as well and gets to come start maybe working there a little bit. And, um, She's the target audience for the magazine. So I think her POV is, is um, much needed as well. Cool, and what kind of animal do you think Shelly's like? I was thinking about that when you asked. I would say like an otter. Oh, <laughs> she's that's like, cute. She's very like um, family oriented, yeah. um, but also loves to have a good time. <laughs> and um, did you guys do any research about 1970s America or feminism or the kind of the porn industry back there in the Valley during that there? Well, the makeup and tra the hair trailer was stocked with Playgirl magazines, which was great from that era. And they really did like a great job of like sort of filling all the walls with the images. Um, I was born in 1975. So I feel like I lived it as a baby. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think my, like my parents were, yeah. were young people during that time, you know, right. um, newly married in 1970. So... Uh -huh. Like, I feel like I know I have like a, a connect, a definite connection oh, yeah. to it. Um, uh, yeah. What about you, Oscar? Did you I, you, I remember you, like you said you were learning about the cameras, right? Yes. Yeah. So before we shot the pilot, I um, trained and worked a lot of the analog cameras at the time. Oh, cool. So uh, yeah, there turns out they're a lot more difficult than a digital camera. <laughs> <laughs> No more pointing well, or their phone. Ex exactly. No more pointing the phone. Not just the, not the autofocus. You know, you have to manually focus stuff. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. But what was so cool about working with these analog cameras was that you felt a, a, a sense of pride when a picture came together in, in a beautiful way mm -hmm. because you really have to take the time to, because everything's on film and also everything was really expensive too. Like the equipment... Yeah was very pricey. So like everything had to work perfectly, the sort of composition of it. So in a way, you know, I've I've never considered myself a photographer before doing the show, but I understand the magic of making a picture come together because there's so many moving elements and they all sort of have to marry perfectly to create an image back in the day. So there was a lot of care and a lot of attention to an analog camera and a lot of love too, which oh, people yeah. sort of 
don't have with their cell phone because mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. we're taking pictures with cell phones now you know yeah exactly. so it, you oh, know so exactly with a camera phone you know so but uh i loved working with an analog camera loved it cool maybe a, a new hobby absolutely oh my gosh absolutely if i could afford the film yeah definitely. oh yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah so i guess you kind of talked a little bit about this already oscar but um can you talk a little bit about how uh, Richie flexes his creative muscles now as a, as, a, as a new photographer? Well, I mean, you said it. He cr- he flexes his creative muscles, maybe for the first time ever. You know, he was never given an opportunity or a chance to do that before. I mean, we're talking about 1972. There wasn't a lot of opportunities for a gay man of color at that time, you know? So when you have someone that believes in you and it's like oh you can take pictures you know there's a lot of pressure and despite all that like we find Richie sort of expressing it in his own way um the creative outlet that he never thought he had that's the magic of Richie's storyline is that he was whether his whether it was his background or just society in general that sort of like tampers down POC and queer voices like he was able to find his own voice through the camera lens and it's something beautiful to watch and I loved playing that part of Richie. Mm-hmm. Very cool um, and, and then you, t- you kind of talked about how you know Shelly is kind of Joyce's best um, friend can you talk about how the relationship develops through through our mix, mix? Yeah you know I think we get closer they, because they're sisters but there's um there's a distance I think that's probably was set, you know, in their childhood about what was allowed to be talked about and what was not allowed to be talked about. And I think they each take small steps towards um, sharing their truths with each other. I I think Joyce probably leans on Shelly in times of, of, of in in like tough times. And I think Shelly usually is, is the returner of tough love. Um, but their relationship to me, it sort of takes a different course in which Shelly is the one who needs things and, and Joyce continues to need things and doesn't like do this, do the flop. So, um, it, it kind of becomes unbalanced because Shelly's like taking, like, she's not taking that traditional relationship that they've had. So it's, um, Yeah. Yeah, but also I think Joyce is offering Shelley an opportunity to um, to enter this exciting world, you know, because she can see that her sister needs needs a win. <laughs> so, oh yeah. And then, um, what three words would you both both use to describe Minx? Ooh, um, I would say three words to describe Minx: sexy, yeah. important progressive Ooh. i would say um uh, funny titillating mm-hmm. and um necessary oh cool well, the, the very powerful words uh thank you so much thank you so much for talking with me thank yeah, you so much, so much.